by August, Goring estimates that he needs only four days to put the English fighter planes out of action. He begins preparations for Adler Tug, or the Eagle Attack, an operation which will be the knockout blow to the RAF. It is decided that the attack will commence on August 13th. For the first time in history, a great campaign is going to be fought and decided in the air. Well, if you were a bomber pilot, you'd be awakened at 4 o'clock in the morning uh, because all the, the raids would be conducted at dawn. You'd have breakfast, you'd have your briefing, and at uh, 5.30 or 6 before dawn, you'd take off so that uh, the flight over England would come at a time when the sun was rising behind you. And there was a reason for that also. If you were flying from Germany to England, you'd be flying out of the rising sun, which would make it more difficult to see the bombers. And then you'd try to drop the bombs and make the run for home. On the run home, you, know, you were in completely in daylight, and the Spitfires were able to shoot down large numbers of German planes and pilots. The Germans had the long flight from Germany to Britain and back again, and uh, the odds were with the defenders, because they had better planes, and they didn't have to fly as far. From morning until evening, the Luftwaffe carries out a relentless attack. In spite of the bad weather and heavy opposition, they managed to hit airfields, dockyards, and aircraft factories. But in the process, they lose 45 of their aircraft. The British lose only 13. Killing people, that didn't come into it. We weren't trying to kill people. We were trying to shoot the aircraft down, stop it from them, stop it hitting other people. The, the, the bloke sitting in the airplane, we never thought of. I didn't anyway, and uh, I don't think many people did. Two days later, on August 15th, Goering again puts his squadrons in the air. He hopes that the heavy fighting of the 13th has so severely depleted the RAF that gaps will be left in their defenses. It is to be a day of hard fighting. German strategy was to bomb England into submission. To do that, they fought with fighters protecting the bombers to fly over Britain. Unescorted bombers could still get away with flying over the Channel and over Britain because they were armed with machine guns. They had three guns on each bomber and they had turrets in which they could shoot 360 degrees. On this day, the Luftwaffe has gotten nearly 1,800 flights in the air. They had expected an all-out victory. Instead, Adler Tug is a failure. It is the first decisive defeat that the German Air Force has suffered in the war. Because of the heavy casualties, especially among the bomber crews, the German high command is shaken. After a brief lull due to bad weather, the Luftwaffe again attacks with renewed vigor. For the British, the situation is becoming more serious. They are still shooting down more enemy planes than they themselves are losing. But they have now come to a point where the loss of a single plane or the death or wounding of even one pilot represents an important setback. The Germans continue to hammer away at the nerve centers of the Royal Air Force Command. The repair and maintenance squadrons do their best with the overused aircraft, but it's the loss in pilots that is most damaging. Fighter Command strength had stood at 1,400 pilots at the end of July. Three weeks later, it has fallen to 1,000. The pilot forces are being dangerously diminished. The communication systems and airfields are being battered. Even the pilot reserves are reaching desperate lows. Now the question is, how much longer can Fighter Command hold out? How much longer before the Luftwaffe deals its final crushing blow? How many more days can the English withstand the onslaught? Anxious to put an end to the British standoff, the Germans choose a course of action that will strengthen England's resolve. 
On August 24th, 200 German bombers are sent to attack targets in many different areas of England and Wales. The pilots do not have specific orders to bomb London, but bombs are dropped on the city. The Germans later deny that the bombing is intentional and place the blame on faulty navigation and mixed messages. Bombing in London certainly must have been planned. Given the German planning and the devotion to detail and the following orders, uh, it, it's almost inconceivable that the bombing of London could have been accidental, especially given the fact that the Germans targeted the east end of London particularly because they were trying to bomb an area in which they knew that there were a lot of Jews in London living. The British immediately send their bombers on a retaliatory raid against Berlin. The effect of this raid on Hitler is out of all proportion to the damage done. Hitler was absolutely flabbergasted. He had promised the German people that no bombs would ever fall on Berlin. And when the British did begin to bomb Berlin, Hitler went almost insane, uh, swearing revenge, swearing he'd bomb whole cities off the map. But the Allies had so many planes, there really wasn't by that time anything he could do. The Luftwaffe is now ordered to switch the offensive from the RAF to the city of London. Hitler believes that a prolonged bombing of London will cause panic and mass hysteria among the population. But the side effect is that the airfields and sector stations are spared at a crucial moment. The RAF is given time to repair the damage done to their facilities and equipment. It also takes the pressure off their fighter pilots. One more week of attacks might have led to disaster. Now the RAF can reconsolidate its forces. Late in the afternoon of Saturday, September 7th, the Germans launch their new strategy. From a forward airbase, Göring himself watches the flights take off toward the English coast. The attack is planned to coincide with factory closings when the most civilians will be exposed. Tons of high explosives and many thousands of incendiary bombs are dropped on London within an hour and a half. The docks and warehouses and the densely packed residential areas which surround them burn furiously. The blaze is visible for miles. The fire started in this raid cannot be put out before more bombers return later that night with another load. All of London seems to be burning.